evening and welcome to Games Master. Now, being the most amusing show on television, we continually get letters praising our highly innovative approach to light entertainment. Now and again, however, we get one which is less than positive, like this. Now, um, I'm going to read you the exact words here. Dear Dominic, I am appalled at the so-called content of your show. You seem to use video games and women as a cheap way of getting in your own weak jokes about pants, old people and rude phrases. Do you think this is funny? Yours in anger, Martha Smelly Bottom Pants Granny. <laughs> now, you're right, I don't think it's funny, Martha. What I think is funny is making up letters from viewers with imaginary ridiculous surnames. Hope that answers your question. Okay, we're in a beginning this show with an event type situation. Today, we're calling it Hot 4-Way Action. <laughs> Wireplay is Britain's first quite literally dedicated network gaming service, allowing PC users all over the country to compete in various multiplayer games. The system's not been without its teething trouble, so we thought we'd gather up a few people from around the country to find out whether Wireplay really is the future of gaming or just plain pish. For this event, I have found a plucky flying ace to take on three opponents in different parts of the country on the network game EF2000. Tucked snugly into his cockpit, my contestant will need plenty of British spunk if you to avoid going down to his three murderous opponents. Talks away, lads. Okay, uh, this fine young figure of a man is going to be our Atlantis-based challenger in the Wireplay Challenge, Robert Murphy uh, from Harpenden. Robert, is it uh, Robert, Rob, Bob, Rab, Bert, Cynthia, what would I call you? Rob. Rob is fine, we're happy with Rob. Okay, now I believe that uh, you've, uh, you quite fancy that uh, Gillian Anderson from the X-Files? Oh yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think she's a very nice lady? Yeah, very nice. Well, it's funny because as I left her this morning doing my hoovering and washing up, she said she quite fancied you as well. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, now Rob, you're going to be playing against three people spread out all over uh, Britain. I'm just going to check and see if we've got them all there. Let's go to Ian. In Hi. Croydon. Hello, Ian. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Ian? I'm doing OK, thanks. Right, thanks, Ian. Uh, we have also got Jason in Stepney. Hello, Jason. Hi. Hi. Now, Jason, your nickname is Bonehead. That's right. Why is that? Um, it's just something... I'm just... The PE teachers, my old school, used to call me that because, you know, I used to always get into trouble or I'd be falling down the stairs. I was just a bit accident-prone, so he used to call me Bonehead, so it's just sort of always stuck. Right. Living proof of the lack of imagination in PE teachers at present within the national curriculum. OK, finally, we've got Martin up in Warrington. Hello, Martin. Hello, Tom. Martin, you've got a weird nickname as well. Is it Scumbag? No, oh, well, I don't know. Um, I've got lots of nicknames, really, but it's obviously family TV, so um, that seemed most appropriate. Excellent. OK, so we appear that we've got quite literally a cross-section of the moral fabric of British society. Rob, I think you're the only normal one, to tell <laughs> the truth. I mean, we've got a lot of weirdos against you today. Definitely. OK, Rob, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get you set up in your games playing position, and uh, while we do that, you can look at today's news. <laughs> This isn't a home video of my recent holiday in the Cotswolds, it's Two Rock, the first first-person shoot-em-up for the N64. The graphics are impressive and feature some of the most spectacular explosions seen outside my pants. Two Rock is released March the 4th, unless I tell them otherwise. Dante's Peak is Hollywood's latest special effects thingy, aiming to do for volcanoes what Foucault did for post-structuralism. The film stars Linda Hamilton, that lady who ran around in a vest in the Terminator films, and the bloke who seems to be in everything these days, 007 star Piers Brosnan. Dante's Peak will be over here next month, unless I tell them otherwise. The new MMX chip for the PCs had a lot of hype, but Pod is the first game to really show its graphics handling capabilities to the full. Released in a couple of months, it features all sorts of network and multiplayer bib bobs, including internet play. So if the brand new £2,000 PC you bought a couple of months ago doesn't have an MMX chip, chuck it out, unless I tell you otherwise. OK, we're about to play our fantastic Wireplay Challenge. We have got Ian, Jason and Martin uh, spread out quite literally all over Britain. They're going to be trying to gun down young Rob Murphy, who's with us in the studio. Rick Henderson is here. That's all you need to know. 
Have you got any tips then? Right, yeah. Well, wire play is one of the only safe ways you can invite strangers into your house without having to lock up the family jewellery. Uh -huh. So, quite basically, he's got three men on his tail. He's going to have to reserve his missiles. They're gunning for him. He's on his own. Uh, best of luck to uh, all four of our competitors, especially Rob, because he is one of our own, I like to think. Uh, OK, Rob, off you go. OK, so off you go. The first thing I'll point out is that because this is a flight simulation, many of the things you see on the screen won't make sense unless you're doing an open university course and have a beard but no moustache. Ignore them. The most important thing is the little sights in the middle, that little kind of uh, rectangular box there. That's what he wants to try and lock on to the other players. And there's Bonehead, in fact, he's going to try and get his sight on Bonehead there and uh, hopefully let loose a couple of missiles. He's doing all right, though, Rick. He's slowly getting that target on. Bonehead's quite a, a fair distance away, so strafing him with machine guns would be a bad idea. And up, he's locked on. We switched to an external view that you can see the two missiles, and Bonehead's dodged them. Bonehead goes in a very sharp climb there, Rick. A very good tactic. That was very Tom Cruise. Now he, all he has to do is fly upside down over the other plane and make rude gestures. <laughs> OK, he's coming up for a second Super Bonehead. He's loose the missiles again, and off they go. Can Bonehead evade these? You can see the missiles going. You can see Bonehead, and oh, he just got over the bottom of the screen of Bonehead. OK, then, now he's moving on to, uh, who's next, Chevy? Uh, OK, Chevy's quite near the ground. What would you do if you were Chevy, Rick? If I was Chevy, I would get the hell out of there, because, obviously, Rob's going to let fly a couple of missiles any second now. OK, Chevy's a bit close to the ground as well. Rob's going to have to be careful. He doesn't crash as well. No, no, Chevy's climbing. He's trying to use the same tactics as Bonehead, but he's got the lock on, and he's loose his missiles. That's it, that Chevy has gone down. Oh, yes, bye-bye, Chevy. Get your hair cut. So, one more competitor left, that's Martin. You can see, as the behind view, he's actually sneaking up behind Rob. What should he do, Rick? He should let off a couple of missiles at this point, but he seems now to have turned around himself and flying away again. A very, very clever 180-degree turn there by Rob. He's trying to get Martin in his sights now. But this terrain looks a little bit bumpy in front of him, Rick. Is he running and hiding quite cleverly here, Martin? Well, Martin really wants to try and fight back, but the second best thing would be to try and get a huge landmass in between him and Rob. Like your mum, for example. Or, or my sister. <laughs> I'm a very sad <laughs> OK, so there it is. There's the clip. Martin's got to watch it, doesn't that? Rob's got to watch it, doesn't actually crash in this clip. He's let off the missiles, but I think the clip's going to be between them and Martin's plane. Yes, they are. Very smart flying by Martin, but he can't run forever, can he, Rick? He certainly can't because he's run out of my mum. <laughs> it's a very flat terrain now. A bit like my washboard Peter Andre style stomach. But now he's trying to get the lock on. That's it. The missiles have gone. And Martin is desperately trying to evade them, but I don't think he's going to have the speed. The missiles are swimming right into them, and it's going to, yes, right up the back end. And that's it, Martin Spider goes down in small meets our very own Rob Murphy wins the challenge. OK, Rob, stand over there, young man. Congratulations, well done. Uh, was there ever any point you were worried during that at all? Definitely not. They were all weird. I just outclassed them totally. OK, so our Atlantis-based challenger has successfully beaten off the rest of the country. He deserves to be rewarded for that titanic effort. Let's give Robert Murphy a go to Games Master Joystick. <laughs> OK, now we've had a successful glimpse of what it's like to live in Croydon, Stepney and Warrington. I'm sure you all want to go off and book a fortnight in those respective resorts. We'll give you the chance to do it during today's reviews. <laughs> Up, we've got Soul Edge on the PlayStation, a 3D fighting game, which is great because it's been all of two minutes since the last one. Soul Blade is a conversion of Namco's Soul Edge arcade machine. From the start of the game, you notice they've added new things, beginning with one of the best intro sequences you've ever seen. It's also got the same graphics, incredible for a home system, and all 11 characters. The Edge Masters mode is basically a quest mode. But it's fantastic, because what happens is you take your character and you have to walk through a map meeting other characters on the way. When you vanquish them, you actually get a new weapon to use. And when you've actually collected your weapons, you can go back into the fighting mode and actually use them. You can use them against all the other characters, and that makes each character completely and utterly unique with new fighting styles. And that is superb. It makes the arcade machine look like nothing. Finally, Melt on the PC. I know absolutely nothing about this game, but it doesn't really matter because it's supposed to be pish. 
Everyone knows Eddie, Iron Maiden's zombie mascot. And in this game, he's the bad guy. You've got to travel through time, through different planets, finding pods to make yourself powerful enough to find Eddie in hyperspace and defeat him. The idea of Melt is certainly an interesting one, giving yourself a set time limit in which to complete the game and having to really hunt around for things. Unfortunately, I prefer my games to have a bit more action and be a bit more fun than this. If you want to know what Rick thought of this game, you can log on to the Games Master webpage. You won't actually find out, but BT will make a bit of money. Now, you may have read in some newspapers that Boyzone were appearing on the show tonight. Uh, they were going to be coming on, but they insisted that we show their latest video. Having watched it, I didn't want to inflict that upon you. So uh, find out who we've got instead after this message uh, about tonight's celebrity challenge. It's time to get all wet now, as my next challenge is on the Nintendo 64 jet ski game, Wave Racer. Each contestant will attempt to score the maximum points on two separate tracks as they churn across the water. Time is short, and they'll have to reach the extension points if they want to stay in the money. Surf's up. Our special guest tonight recently won uh, Best Rap Act at the Black Music Awards, an award they narrowly pipped me for, bizarrely enough. Please welcome the Brotherhood! <laughs> It's so spicy. The same blood. Come on. Welcome, Shadow. Nice to meet you. I want to talk about the subjects of rap, right? What you, what, I mean, what would you say you guys mostly rap about? Well, about every, everyday living still, you know, what we've gone through yeah. to get where we're going now, you know, our little, our little hardships, you know, like yeah. no double check or whatever. Uh -huh. You just put it on wax. But there's not a lot of stuff rap about clothing, like about pants. <laughs> no one doesn't rap about pants or anything. I mean, that's everyday uh, living. Yeah, or well, we could do something for you, you know? A little pants wrap for you, you know? I, I can do a pants wrap. Go on, then. Get us a little verse. Yeah, a little, a little pants wrap, pants are okay, um, I'm, uh, I'm the MC Dominic, my pants are too tight. <laughs> they itch and they scratch, keep me up all night. I uh, want to get rid of these pants, but he won't give up without a fight. If I get a looser pant, then I'll feel all right. Peace. MCB in the house. <laughs> That's it. See, there's never been any Scottish rappers, has there? Yeah, well, there is now. now well, there's probably a good reason why there hasn't been. <laughs> now, you've, had, you've both had a prize at this before. Who, who was coming out on top in it? This guy here, man. So you're the favourite then, Shiloh? Only at this, because it's like a, it's a racing game and stuff. It was a beat-em-up, and Spice would be taking the prize right about now. But we'll might see what happens, you know. Might I mean? end up a beat-em-up if Spice is a bad loser. <laughs> we might have another one. <laughs> no, our friendship's too good for that. Please! <laughs> we'll see later on, we'll see later on, you know. OK, if you want to see um, if the Brotherhood will split as a result of this challenge, join us after this break. <laughs> To Games Master, we have the Brotherhood on as special guest tonight. If you missed the first half of the show, then you missed me doing a rap for the first time ever. In the break, I've cut my first single. Derek Lynch from Namco Wonder Pass is the only person who's bought it. Right, Derek, any tips for the guys on Wave Racer? Well, for this game, they'll have to watch out for the line themselves up on the jumps, mm -hmm. also go for the loops, and when they do go on the jumps, do a hoop. Hoop? No, a loop. A, a loop in the air, that's okay. right, by clever manipulation of the joystick. OK, Thank then. Uh, the name of the game is points. Like Derek was saying, there's three ways of scoring points. The first way is get as much air off the jump so you can pull some stunts in the air. Secondly, go through all of the hoops. Uh, the more hoops you can go through, the more points you will get. It kind of goes up. You miss one, you go back to the start, point-wise, and you knock your watch off. And uh, finally, any time you have left when you go through the finishing line, it will be converted into points, so you don't want to hang about either. We are going to do two courses, a one-jump course and a four-jump course. Spice is up first on the one-jump course. Best of luck, Spice. Take it away. OK, on the screen, we can see the time taken away in the top of the corner. We can see these loops coming up. That's the first one, 50 points for the first ring, 100 for the second. This will go up until he misses a ring. He's through the first checkpoint there. It's a good start, Derek. That's right. You see every, every loop, every ring, yeah, let's hit it. That's good. Oh, he's, oh no, he missed one there. So the points one. are going to go back down to 50. Here comes Through the jump. jump. He scores only 1,365. He's going to have to make the next checkpoint if he can. 3, 2, 1. Is he going to get through it? He's just through the hill, just in a time extension. But now he's running out of time. We'll cut the finish line. 1, 5, 4, 5. So when we can get the time remaining into points, Spice gets a first round score of 1,790. Please make way for Shylock. 
Okay, best of luck, Shylock. Take your first round spin. So off goes Shylock. The first thing he wants to worry about is getting through all of these rings, Derek. And he's missed one already. Really? So the next one's going to be worth just. Oh no, he's missed another one. Maybe he's just going for speed here, Derek. Who knows? Looks like it. No. Oh no, he's missed another ring. He's, a, he's got a thing about rings, Derek. Right. He has to try and get a good stunt here. Here's the stunt. Oh! On round two. So Derek, Shylock 908 points ahead after the first round. How can Spice come back here? Well, what Shylock did, he did an excellent stunt off the jump. On the, on the jump. So that's putting him ahead. Mm -hmm. So Spice will have to watch to be accurate on those loops. And there's four jumps in this next course. Right. So if you can do a stunt on each on, one of on those ramps, one. he's well ahead. He's in with a chance. <laughs> okay, best of luck, Spice. Take it away for round two. Okay, like Derek said, four jumps in this one, so a lot of points at stake. We've got these loops first of all. He's going through these rings. They're quite easy to start, Derek. That's right. This is, he's holding a good course. That's good. This is the gentle bank here up to 250. Oh, he's oh, missed from the back to be worth 50 points. Through the check, but now we've got the jump, Derek. Jump. Oh, lovely. Christ on there, the second jump. It's wiped out, Derek. It's going to take him a bit of time. The time's going to run out, Derek. And four, three. I don't think he's going to make the next shake when he wants to get a point somehow. He's not going to be able to. He finishes on 2,906 for Spice. Spice, please make way for Shylock. So Spice is two round total, 4,696. So that means Shylock uh, only needs to get 1,999 to win today's challenge. Best of luck, Shylock. Take your second round spin. Okay, again, Derek, I suppose he's got the choice. He can go for the rings or he can just maybe play it nice and safe and make sure he does the stunts off the jump. Oh, he's missed the first ring. Missed the first ring. He's only got 50 points so far. He's going to have to score a bet on the judge. But he got the time bonus there, 350 for the time left, and he went through the checkpoint. He's on 550 through another time. 955. Let's see the stunts now, Derek. Right. He's first jump. He's done it. He's first back loop. That's it. And he's the 24. Now it's just a kind of, it's just a little bit of showmanship now, Derek. He's That's done right. the challenge. Excellent. It's a wonderful display, though, Derek. Take us through. Well, he's avoiding the dolphins and he's hitting those rings. Last jump here. Oh Lovely. Oh. It's almost that again, Derek, isn't it? Your style. It is amazing. And through the finishing line, the final score, 5,441. I'm not sure the exact points, but I know it's quite a big winning margin for Shiloh. Congratulations, Spice. See, man. Congratulations, right. Shylock. Thank you very much. Okay, Spice, uh, let's talk about figures. I mean, I can't even count up how much that Shylock beat you by, but I do know that his second round score was more than your two rounds put together. Well, the only thing I got was I was cack at this game, but no big thing still. I'll uh -huh. get him. Oh, no big thing. Shylock, what were you interesting tactics you were using, especially in the first round? Well, you know, I'm not too good with rings, so, you know, <laughs> I just forget the rings and just go for the jumps because that's where the points are, but. Uh -huh. You know, it's luck, really. Well, you, well, you, you see me drive. Mm. It's not very good. <laughs> I'm good. It was, it was a lucky three and a half thousand point win. A it's, very lucky it's three and a half thousand point win. <laughs> Listen, thanks so much for coming on, guys. Uh, all the best in the future. For real. Thanks very much. There is only one Games Master Golden Joystick, and uh, Spice doesn't get it. <laughs> Go to Games Master Joystick, goes to Shiloh. <laughs> the respective differences in the Brotherhood's uh, ring work, I'll let you guess adoringly on today's feature. This week, I'm being ironic in Venice Beach, California, home of Digital Domain. They've done the effects in the Terminator 2 3D attraction in Florida, the effects in films like Interview with a Vampire, Apollo 13, and James Cameron's forthcoming uh, Titanic. But more importantly, they have done the most fantastic piece of software ever, Barbie Fashion Designer.
Barbie fashion designer is not so much a game, more of a toy. Would-be Vivian Westwoods can design their own Barbie outfits and even print them out on special fabric paper, watched by men with beards. It's the first ever best-selling CD-ROM for girls and became the US equivalent of the Buzz Lightyear toy last Christmas with supply far exceeding demand. I am with Andrea Maloro, who's the executive producer of the greatest piece of software in the history of the world. Andrea, how did the idea come about for Barbie Fashion Designer? Mattel came to us with a few concepts, four or five, and we decided we'd like Barbie Fashion Designer the best. A four-year-old daughter of one of the vice presidents came up with the idea originally. Her name is E.J. Rifkin. She's now eight or nine years old. Uh, it was about four years ago. So did the kid get a cut? <laughs> Hopefully she's getting a cut of pay her allowance went up and getting a cut of daddy's paycheck. You've had the first ever girl-orientated game blockbuster smash type situation. How different is it when you go out to design a game specifically for girls? Well, we took something that, you know, little girls like to do. Girls use their imagination, and they don't use their imaginations to create war games. Uh -huh. So we had them do what they like to do, dress up. As do we all. The most technically impressive aspect of fashion design is probably the catwalk preview mode. It's a sequence that uses technology loyal Games Master viewers will be familiar with. Of course, no self-respecting digital studio goes without one of these. Yes, your classic baseball hat with ping-pong balls, LA fashion statement there. But coincidentally, these are also used in motion capture technology and digital domain has the greatest in the world. Yes, this is indeed Michael Jackson on his sponsored Weight Watchers tour. It's a scene from his latest video created by Digital Domain's motion capture supremo, Andre Bustanobi. What was the, the biggest problem to get over in the motion capture for Barbie? Uh, probably the main problem was that uh, as a character uh, and, and a, sort of a, a, a toy with uh, rather stylistic proportions in terms <laughs> of her uh, relative to a, a human body, we had to somehow uh, bring in an actress, you know, a model, put the markers on her, and somehow take that and sort of fit it into, uh, into the Barbie model. What's the main difference in terms of the problems between the motion capture for Barbie and the motion capture for Michael Jackson stroke skeleton? Uh, it, essentially, they the were the same. It was the same uh, capture technology. But with, uh, with Michael Jackson, a whole different kind of motion and uh, a heck of a lot more markers because of the nature of the character mm -hmm. and the subtlety of his own motion for the dancing. Well, this high technology was mighty impressive, but personally, I couldn't wait to get the filming over with and enjoy the simpler pleasures in life. Good night, love. OK, I hope you are sitting down because I know today's show was pretty fantastic. Next week's is going to be even better. And if you watch and don't believe me, then uh, come in and feel free to kick my head in. I will leave you with a question. If Bob Hoskins reckons it's so good to talk, why is he taking out a high court injunction preventing me from getting within 50 feet of the wee guy? Good night. <laughs>